Get me some food, okay? I'm the boogeyman, and I'm coming to get you! <laughs> He's gonna shove it! Yeah! He's gonna shove it! Man. Shove it, Squall. I hope you're all ready for today's episode of Ring of the Hawk. Where you should be, because today's wrestler's been requested on YouTube more than anybody else. And I'm not really sure why that is. When today's competitor was in the WWE, I was barely paying attention to the product, so I can't remember if he was any good in the ring. But the gimmick itself is memorable to say the least. Just before we get into all of that, make sure you join us on the Flying to Graceland World Tour as we fly together to the Graceland of 100k subscribers. And if you say that you're not, you're just a bunch of liars. And of course, if you know a wrestler that can do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K any night, any day, ha ha! Shove their name in the comments, Jack! Alright, the boogeyman, he wrestled and ate worms, but did he suck sperms? So before we start, one quick thing to clear up. The Boogeyman originally lied about his age when coming into wrestling. He got started really late. He was around 40 years of age at the time of this run, and he debuted on SmackDown, hiding under a table with a serving tray on his head, scaring Simon Dean. Not exactly a promising start, is it? Match 1. Simon Dean, who is scared of the Boogeyman versus the Boogeyman, who gets a big pop from the crowd. Then he smashes a clock over his head and fireworks go off. At least it wasn't a brick. Taz and Michael Cole are discussing what disease he has and they settle on Tourette's. Simon tries to jump him but then changes his mind and falls over. The boogeyman shakes and starts walking towards him. Simon is crying and pleading and throws a tampon at him. Boogeyman gets a fistful of worms and shoves them in his mouth. Simon's terrified and then the boogeyman jabs him in the face. Boogie picks him up pump handle style and then hits a reverse body slam. No idea if he's any good in the ring based on this performance but he's certainly got a lot of gimmicks going for him at once. A worm-eating, clock-smashing horror film gimmick. I guess it's a C because he seems like an interesting young chap. Match 2, Smackdown, the Boogeyman vs Ray Gordy, some jobber who looks like a seagull. Boogeyman shakes towards Sea Gordy as he panics and tries to flap his wings and fly away. Boogie chokes him in the corner and eats worms in his face. He slams Sea Gordy down to the floor with authority and then he knees him to the gut. This time he hits a proper pump handle which in my opinion looks less impressive than the other slam he used. He spits his worms all over his face and then he leaves, undefeated. He already feels like a joke unfortunately. The guy looks legitimately freaky and with some work he could be a more serious character, it's a D. Match 3, Smackdown opener, the Boogeyman vs Nunzio with Vito. Boogeyman dances around the ring and Nunzio falls over on his ass. Boogie hooks both of his arms and starts throwing headbutts and then he chucks Nunzio across the ring. He smiles with worms hanging out of his mouth and then he throws Greedo back in the corner. Pump handle and it's over. Vito wants to help his little friend but he's too scared and he doesn't bother. From now Stop on it's man. an S until an actual match happens because we're three matches in and I still have no idea if this guy's any good. No match for quite a while now. The Boogeyman has started harassing JBL and Gillian Hall which leads to match 4, Royal Rumble 2006. The Boogeyman versus JBL with Gillian Hall. At least we should get something here. Bradshaw is scared and doesn't want to get in the ring. This is a former world champion right here. Bradshaw eventually does get in the ring and uses Gillian Hall as a human shield and then he bails from the ring again. Boogeyman then tries to reenact that one scene from the Lady and the Tramp with the spaghetti. Bradshaw finally gets in the ring and he starts battering Boogie. He fights back with a punch of his own and then Bradshaw throws him out of the ring and he rolls around like a complete moron. Bradshaw throws him into the commentary desk and gets him in the ring. Gillian starts to distract the referee and Bradshaw chokes Boogie with some tape. JBL tries a clothesline from hell but misses and smacks into the ring pole. The Boogeyman then finishes him off with a pump handle in a 3 minute pay per view match. What a weird one, they tried to be serious and brawl around the ring and then the Boogeyman beat Bradshaw despite only hitting one punch and a pump handle. Still no idea if he's any good, but at least he beat Bradshaw. So I have to retract my previous statement and not give him an S, but it's a D instead. Match 5, Smackdown, Orlando Jordan vs the Boogeyman. Oh for god's sake, is he gonna have a single serious match here? Boogeyman is distracted by the referee so Orlando jumps him. OJ slams him in the corner but nothing seems to be hurting him. The Boogie then catches Orlando and hits a big clothesline. Pump handle slam, it's over. Another match that went less than a minute and this one is a definite S. Oh, man. Michael Cole asks what's wrong with him? I've been asking myself the same question all night. Well so far this has the potential to be the worst competitor and ring of the Hawk of all time. It could even be as bad as Garrett Bischoff. But I'm sure out of 20 odd matches, there has to be one passable match. Just one, that's all I ask, please. 
Match 6, SmackDown, two-on-one handicap match, The Dicks. What is it with all these weird gimmicks in 2006? Versus The Boogeyman, who everyone is still terrified of, by the way. At least Booker T's on commentary, which makes it entertaining, with his insane commentary. The Dicks try to hit him, but it's not having much effect. He throws one into the corner and hits a scoop slam. The other one gets clotheslined out of the ring. The Boogeyman throws one of the dicks into the other on the ring apron and he crashes into the commentary desk. And then we get a beautiful new move with a choke bomb and Boogie wins yet again. At least he hit a new move but the match is still shorter than your dad's dick. Booker T runs away and Boogeyman spreads worms over the commentary desk. It's a D for spectacle but what I'm trying to figure out is why you all hate me so much and ask me to sit through all this rubbish. What did I ever do to any of you? Was it because back in the day I tried to start a boycotting movement of the WrestleMania channel? Hashtag ban the brummy. Or was it for insulting Adam Dreary at what culture? I think he was the one who sang that wacky song, wasn't he? I truly love you, Hulk Hogan, brother. This one's for you. Stay strong and look out for all those TNA maniacs. Because you've got to do it for me and you. Jesse Neal, Vinny Rue, Rampage Jackson, Robert, Robert Roode, Gunnar Murphy, Jay Lee Fool, Samoa Joe, Belly Fool, Sanjay Sada, Siaki, the guy who wrote this smells, smells like... like... I might be wrong, but that's not what your girlfriend said when I took off her thong. Match 7, WrestleMania 22, two-on-one handicap match, Booker T and Charmel versus the Boogeyman. I can't believe he's at WrestleMania. Booker and Charmel both cry with fear. I cried with anger. Booker tries to make his wife start the match, but then Booker jumps him with a shot from behind. The bookman gives him a beat down and then boots Boogie in his worm. Booker hits a big time sidekick for a two count, the biggest move that he's taken so far in this run. Booker's more confident now and he chokes Boogie across the ropes. The crowd are bored and they're chanting, show us your worm. The boogeyman eventually no-sells Booker T's offence, but Booker T hits him with a bookend for another two count. It looks like his undefeated run may be over here. Boogie starts a fight back with some weird strikes and then he dodges the scissors kick and hits a big time forearm. The Boogeyman sends Booker into the corner post and he pulls out a pocket full of worms. Charmel gets to the ring with the Boogeyman's staff, but she can't hit him with it because he turns around. Then he kisses her with a mouth full of worms. She screams and runs away. Booker misses an attack in the corner and then the Boogeyman puts him away at the choke bomb. This wasn't good. That's how you define this match. It just wasn't good. It was still a surprising win over Booker T and that kiss spot is pretty funny however. I can't give it anything more than a D but at least he beat a legend here. Who did Booker T piss off to be in this situation anyway? Match 8 Smackdown 7 months later. So it's not going well for him then is it? The Boogeyman versus TJ Dalton who has pale skin and greasy ginger hair. Nothing happens and the Boogeyman eats his worms and knocks him down. Choke bomb it's over. It's also an S. I have to hand it to the guy. He's so committed to this gimmick, despite the fact that the Fed obviously has nothing of any substance planned for him. Match 9, Smackdown opener. Two on one handicap match. The Boogeyman versus The Miz and Crystal, who gets the jobber treatment with no entrance. Miz starts out with strikes and is the only person so far who doesn't seem to be scared. Miz gets choked and then Crystal grows some balls and jumps on the Boogeyman's back. He throws her off, but The Miz jumps the man. Miz scores a big clothesline knockdown before the Boogeyman hits one of his own. The Miz bails from the ring and leaves his partner alone in the ring with the Boogeyman and his worms. He then spits worms into her face, just randomly ends, not sure who won the match but it was stupid. However, Crystal bouncing around in the ring is a rare ring of the Hawke. I'm just joking, the match sucked. Oh man! Match. match 10, Smackdown main event, the Boogeyman. During his entrance, Michael Cole asked Bradshaw how he became known as the Hawk. I often ask myself the same question. He's taking on Mike Mazanian who says he's also undefeated. He's being wacky and the Boogeyman shuts him up with a kick. Boogie sends him over the top with a clothesline. The Miz is now scared and doesn't want to get back in the ring. How on earth is this the main event of Smackdown whilst Kane vs MVP in a cage is the opener? Miz does eventually get back in the ring and jumps the man. Miz starts slamming Boogie in the corner but he no-sells it. The Miz hits an eye rake and a drop kick for a two count. The Miz continues doing well with a jawbreaker and a couple of clotheslines. I've not seen Boogie get destroyed like this before. The Miz starts being wacky again and yelling hoorah at the crowd. Another terrible gimmick in this video. The Boogeyman suddenly spits out worms and this throws Miz off his game. He runs away like a little girl dumping in his nappy. The ref is trying to count out the Miz but the Boogeyman starts tripling worms over the referee. And then he gives the ref a choke bomb. So I guess this one doesn't have a winner either. It's a D because it was kind of funny. I still have no idea if he can wrestle. This is terrible, but I'm still hanging on to hope that there's going to be one decent match. Match 11, Armageddon 2006. 
The Miz. This hoorah gimmick is making my ears bleed. Just shut up. Versus the Boogeyman. I guess because the last two matches have ended without a decisive winner, this is happening again. Boogeyman's pyro has ADHD this week. Boogie hits a couple of clotheslines and the Miz has to bail from the ring. He gets brought in with an arm drag. Boogie then hits a scoop slam before the Miz fights back and sends Boogie into the corner pole. The Miz starts working on his arm and scores a clothesline knockdown for a two count. Mizzy then follows it up with another knockdown but his offence doesn't have much effect. Boogie then hits a back body drop without the Miz taking any sort of run up, that was all strength. Mizzy tries a top rope dive but he gets caught and choke bombed and it's over. A three minute match on pay per view that didn't need to be on pay per view, Stop it's an it, S. Man. Match 12, two months later. Just end this already, what is the point? Smackdown, the Boogeyman who is foaming like a dog with rabies versus Finley. Boogeyman dodges Finley and thrusts at him sexually. Finley throws a tantrum because of this. Fit Finley tries a headbutt but it hurts him more than it hurts the Boogeyman. Finley is going to have to step his game up if he's going to end the undefeated streak here and he drops Boogie on the rope and floors him with a clothesline. Boogie then starts no-selling Finley's punches so Finley just hits him harder. The Boogeyman starts a comeback and hits multiple punches. Boogie hits the Irishman with a power slam. Then he hits a stiff looking punch and a big splash. Yay, a new move. Boogie starts hitting attacks in the corner and he goes for his choke bomb but Finley fights it off. Finley then runs into a big boot. Another new move here, this match is remarkable. Then the little bastard Hornswoggle appears, so the match now sucks. He tries to steal the worm bag. Boogeyman is distracted by this and so is the referee and Finley uses this as an opportunity to smash a ukulele over his leg. And it's over. The streak is dead, but unfortunately this video isn't. It's a D for hitting some new stuff. I think it's about to get a whole lot worse though. Match 13, Smackdown. The Boogeyman versus Finley, again, who jumps him. Finley backs him into the ring apron and shoves him into the steel steps. They come into the ring and Finley is looking extremely confident. He gives Boogeyman a leg sweep as the crowd are in complete silence. Boogie fights back in the corner but he's quickly shut down. This is so stupid for a guy the size of the Boogeyman he just doesn't seem to use his size advantage. Boogie sends Finley outside and starts striking him. He gives Finley an atomic drop before Finley clotheslines him into the back of the head for a two count. Fit Finley then hits an ass bomb and tries to use his little ukulele again. The referee is distracted and Little Bastard appears and starts attacking the Boogeyman. Then another little person appears. This is the Little Boogeyman and he takes out Hornswoggle. Big Boogie hits a staff to the gut of Finley and makes the cover. It's over. They both eat worms. Great, so now this is even less serious. It's a D because he won. Before the next match, Finley throws Hornswoggle into a bin. But the Little Boogeyman is in there too. That's unfortunate for him. Match 14, tag match, No Way Out 2007. You've got to be kidding me, how the fuck does he keep getting on pay-per-view? This must have pretty much ruined every 2007 show. It's Finley and Hornswoggle versus the Boogeyman and the Little Boogeyman. I can't believe there's a single person out there who wanted to see this match at the time. And just goes my luck that this is the longest match so far. It's hopeless, this run is a pile of steam in hawk turd. One minute goes by as they walk around the ring like morons. Finley suddenly wakes up but he gets a fireman's carry takedown. Boogie takes Finley out of the ring to smash him into the barrier just once and he quickly puts him back into the ring. So what was the point? Boogie hits a big boot and a power slam. The crowd are in complete silence yet again. Little Boogie Man comes in and starts doing ass bombs. Then we proceed to have a little person matchup. Or we would if Finley didn't boot the little Boogie Man in his little face. The little Boogie Man almost beats Finley with a small package. Finley tries to make him tap but he's not strong enough to hurt the little boogeyman. All four men then head outside and go into the ring and then the boogeyman emerges to try and scare Finley. He's definitely not the legal man but I guess no one cares about that. Boogie gets sent into the ropes and he hits a nice comeback shoulder into the ribs on Finley, probably the most impressive move on this entire video. Boogie hits a big clothesline and then he press slams little boogie onto Finley but Hornswoggle breaks up the pin. Why am I even spending so much time on this? Finley hits the little boogie man with a stick to win the match. It's an S. Kill me. Match 15, Smackdown tag match. Finley and Hornswoggle versus the boogie man and little boogie man in a completely pointless rematch. Luckily, half the match is cut off with an advert break, so I was quite happy about this. Boogie man hits a back body drop on Finley that didn't have much height. Boogie then hits a splash in the corner and tries another, but he crashes into the ring pole. Finley quickly smashes Boogie's arm around the post. What's the point in working on body parts in a two minute match? 
Finley and Little Boogeyman fight over a bag of worms. Then Finley stamps on the worms. Then he throws the worms at Michael Cole. Little Boogie hits a low blow on the Irishman and pounds on him, but Hornswoggle comes back in to even up the odds. It doesn't go well for him. Finley boots him in the head and then Boogeyman boots Finley in the head. The ref is distracted and Finley uses his little ukulele. Then the worst part of this video so far happens. Hornswoggle beats the Boogeyman with a DDT that made me pee. What a joke, what a waste of time. You've got this guy who's in great shape and he's obviously committed to his gimmick, but you have literally nothing for him. My Mac is now covered in piss, oh, fuck man. this video. I can't remember the last time I got so upset during an episode of Ring of the Hawk. Match 16, Smackdown Tag Match, The Big Red Machine Kane, and The Boogeyman. Okay, now I'm intrigued. Versus Dave Taylor and William Regal. Boogie doesn't start out this match, but he does seem to be really supportive of his partner Kane. The Red Machine completely ignores his partner for the whole match. He probably doesn't need him, to be honest. Eventually, Boogeyman takes a shot at Dave Taylor on the outside of the ring to help his partner. When I saw this match was over 10 minutes, I thought this could potentially be our first good match, but I was wrong as usual. Kane has no interest in tagging the Boogeyman into the match, even though he's getting battered. Eventually, Dave Taylor misses a dive and Kane decides to bring his partner in. Regal can't hurt him and he gets slammed. Boogie then jabs him in the face and gets a two count. Kane comes back in the ring and just carries on doing everything for the team on his own. Boogeyman hits the choke bomb for the free. This move still hasn't been given a name, or at least on Smackdown it hasn't. It's an S because even his own oh, partner knew how pointless he was and he wrestled about 30 seconds of a 10 minute match. Interestingly, they seem to be teasing a tag team with these two guys. Match 17, the Boogeyman with Little Boogeyman versus William Regal with Dave Taylor. Nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing's happening. The Boogeyman gets his head kicked into the ring pole. He's fine. Choke bomb, it's over. Because Dave Taylor decides to break up the pin despite not being in the match. The Brits try a beat down and Kane makes the save and they run off dumping in their nappies. It's an oh, S, very man. ugly match. I'm not even being harsh. It was absolutely terrible. Smackdown, five months later. So I guess that tease of a team with Kane was pointless then. I've actually started skipping his entrances because I smartly worked out that the entrances are longer than the matches themselves. Match 18, final match. The Boogeyman with Little Boogeyman versus Mark Henry. Boogeyman tries to pound on Henry but it doesn't work and Henry headbutts him. Mark Henry puts him in a bear hug and the Boogeyman collapses. Little Boogeyman gets on the apron so Henry boots him. World's strongest slam to the Boogeyman and it's over. After the match, Henry hits the world's strongest slam on the Little Boogeyman and he was never seen again. It's an S. So that is it, thank god it's over. Apparently the reason he kept disappearing was due to his age and he was racking up the injuries. But he was somehow contracted until 2009. He had even more matches on ECW, but nobody cares about that. Nowadays he signed up to a WWE Legends contract. Wait, oh no, hang on, what? Match 19, ah, oh, Royal Rumble 2015. Bray Wyatt is holding the ring when the Boogeyman crawls out as a surprise entrant. He's still in great shape here, to be fair. They try to out-freak each other, and then Bray takes him out of a clothesline and throws him out of the ring straight away. Well, that was pointless. I don't need to say it, do I? Look, that is really it this time. I get that a lot of people like this guy, and he has a memorable gimmick, and it had potential. But that may have been the worst run of matches I've ever had to sit through. I am convinced you'll hate me after that. Why did so many people want me to watch that? So no, he's not going to have a place on the Ring of the Hawk roster. This was honestly Garrett Bischoff levels of bad. At least he had an interesting gimmick. Garrett was just a greasy scrub. Almost 20 two-minute matches, no good ones, immature storylines, entrances longer than matches, and it ruined my week. So no, no roster spot for him. And the boogeyman can shove those worms tonight, today, and shove them until the foam comes out his mouth and he sprays. Foam, not piss. I'm off to clean up my Mac. And if you don't agree with that, you'll get a smack.